call me old-fashioned or maybe even lacking in confidence, but I really need to mock up an assembly before I ever put a drop of glue on. Let me take you through the steps that I've been through to get it to this point and then we'll glue this up. If you don't have dedicated fixtures for doing glue ups on cabinets, it's real easy to set something up. I set up my I-beam work supports and on top of that is a sheet of hardboard masonite and a half inch sheet of plywood I'll be using for the drawers and another sheet of three-quarter inch plywood <clears throat> but mainly what I want to do is make sure that it's perfectly flat so the first thing that I do is I get a straight edge out and make sure that there's no gaps anywhere and that it's flat enough to accept the assembly so that I get a good square glue up one way to really tell about that is if you've got a nice heavy straight edge like this one, if it drags, that means it's making contact the full length of the straight edge. If it pivots easily, then it's probably rocking and not making contact somewhere along the way. You can also put a bright light behind it and look to see if there's any light shining through. That'll tell you. If you have a low spot, you can shim it easily and get a flat surface. The next thing that you want to do is make sure it's clean because uh, any little chips of wood or anything on there might throw your assembly out of kilter. So the first thing that I wanted to do, and something I am pretty comfortable in gluing up ahead of time without doing a mock-up, is the two pieces of three-quarter inch plywood that form the base. I have one solid piece with no cuts in it. Pretty ugly. That's okay. It's going to be sandwiched inside this. This is going to be the bottom. So I'm going to take the other piece of the bottom and I'll just orient this, line up the edges exactly, and glue this together. One of the advantages of gluing this together first is this will also help to form an extremely level base for the assembly of my cabinets. So let's get this glued up. That's going to take forever. And I'm not going to get all crazy about making sure I have 100% coverage here because the reality is, is when this is glued together, all we're gluing together is the veneer faces of the plywood. So it's not going to have a ton of structural strength. We just want to make sure that it stays together. Actually, the bolts that hold the wheels on will probably do more to hold this together than anything. And now I'll run a little bead of glue around the edges. Make sure the edges are down good. I think that's enough weight, weight down the center. Okay, I've glued up the uh, sandwich of the two bottom pieces together. I've got spring clamps around the uh, periphery. I put one clamp across here to make sure this side was pulled down good. And then I just threw some weights up here, a can of paint, the drawer slides that are going to be used on this process, and this big heavy straight edge. Um, we'll leave this here for a little bit, and in the meantime, we'll prep the other pieces and get ready for the glue up. I'm now just taking the other individual pieces and giving them a light sanding and uh, removing any of the chalk or pencil marks that I had used to identify the parts or to put layout marks on. The other thing that I'm doing is I'm using a little, uh, little sanding block here and I'm just making sure that I don't have any little fuzzies 
on the sides of these dados and putting an extremely light chamfer on the edges of these dados so that assembly and if necessary disassembly is easier going forward. After I do each piece I'm real careful to remove the dust just to make sure that doesn't interfere with my glue up. these somewhat stacked up in assembly order so I can start getting ready to, uh, to do the glue up. This is already getting heavy. I wonder who's going to help me lift this down off this work table. All right, we're just about ready to glue up. Now what I've done is I've put four uh, pipe clamps. They're all identical so they're the same height and give me a maintain my level surface but I put them underneath the base uh, of what will be the assembled cabinet and the reason that I've done that is a couple of reasons first of all uh, here lined up with the uh, vertical divider in my mock-up uh, dry run of the assembly this divider got a little bit too far back this way and beating it this way was difficult and I couldn't get a clamp on it to kind of nudge it into a position. So this will give me a, a clamp for that. Same down here on this end. But more importantly, this elevates the assembly off of the uh, work table by a couple of inches. So if I need to clamp the top down from the top, I've got a place to clamp to because the uh, base is up off the table. Okay, let's get going. Best blue spreader ever. Now, on plywood, it's uh, really a good idea to get plenty of glue up on the edges of these dados so that you're in contact with multiple cores of the wood.
just check for square. And uh, it looks to be just perfect. So looks like we're all set. I'm going to let this sit overnight, get nice and strong, and we're ready for the next step. Well, the glue's dry, I got the clamps off, and I managed to get the cabinet down off the I-beam work supports without hurting my back. So now I've got the cabinet upside down and I'm going to mount the wheels to the cabinet. I'm doing that just so it'll make it easier to move around the shop while I continue to work on this project. I found sort of by trial and error that uh, the distance where I like to set the plate for the caster mount in is about a half an inch from the edges. So I just set my uh, combination square at a half an inch and lined this up from the corner and then made marks in the center of each of these elongated holes so that I can drill pilot holes. This distance from the edge is a little bit of a compromise but seems to work pretty good. It's far enough in from the edge that it's not as much of a toe kick hazard but it's far enough out where you can still get to the locking mechanism for the wheels. Now I'm going to drill pilot holes on my marks and the pilot hole I'm going to drill is a 532nd pilot hole. I'm using number 14 stove head screws an inch and a quarter long which will get me through the first piece of plywood and into the second piece of plywood where I've doubled up the base. I want to drill the pilot hole just into that second piece of plywood so I've put a piece of tape here to mark the location and I'll just drill these pilot holes in. I'm using a brad point bit. these in. Well, it's rolling around. It looks like it's time for the next step. In the next video, we'll start making the drawers and installing them. I hope you'll come back and visit for that video and thank you so much for watching this one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.